Race fans, this is it. The finals of the Bragging Wagon Tournament. Who will be crowned as the Bragging Wagon? My name is Aaron Take. And this is your co-host, Richard Gear. We have trains, we have planes, and we have automobiles. But today is about Rallycross and the finals of the Station Wagon Tournament. You are looking at all of the competitors, except the final four, of course, which are going to be at the starting gate momentarily. Richard, can you believe it? 85 competitors. No, I, I can't believe it. It's so many. Racers have made it here all the way from Canada and the UK, from Australia and New Zealand, just to be here and race, and we hope to see more and more. Don't forget France and Luxembourg. Oh, that's right. How many states do you think are represented here? I'm going to guess uh, 20. If you can believe it, there are 28 states. Wow. That's over half of the United States. That's impressive. And ladies and gentlemen, these are the final four. Take it away, Aaron. Here on the outside lane, from Ontario, Canada, is the Crazy Canuck, and he's driving that Audi Avant RS2. From the state of Michigan is Numskull with Numskull Racing, driving an Audi RS6 Avant. Another Michiganian, Vapor Racing is Sneaky Bob, and he's driving that gorgeous AMC Eagle from 1980. And then from North Carolina, HP Racing is Swervin' Herb, driving a 55 Chevy Nomad. And race fans, feast your eyes on these four cars. One of them will be crowned the Bragging Wagon. There are eight races in total, and the cars will occupy each lane twice. Lights are flashing yellow, and we've got a green light, and off we go with the Canadian Crazy Canuck taking the early lead. Here comes Sneaky Bob, now he pulls ahead, and oh wow, nicely done by Swervin' Herb, down the joker lane first. Numskull has a nice drift, and look at Crazy Canuck. Here he is, coming up, and right on the bumper of Numskull. Swervin' Herb pulls out in the lead. Oh, he and Numskull tangle it up. The Canadian takes the outside lane. The other three are just dancing around. We don't see them yet, and here comes Crazy Canuck down the scrambler. Nicely done. First place goes to the Canadian, and uh, no other finishers. Let's go back to the instant replay package. Now keep your eyes here. Numskull has a good drift, but watch Crazy Canuck come in, and how he narrows Closes in that gap on Numskull is quite impressive. You see him giving him a bump. There's a bump by Vapor Racing, and that shoots Swervin' Herb down. He and Numskull are trying to hold the first place spot and end up spinning out. The Canadian, is a, he takes a smart line on the outside. It looks like Vapor Racing got caught up, and all three drivers are stuck at the top of the big U. After the first race is over, Crazy Canuck leads with four points. Race fans, as you know, one race does not define who the winner is, but boy, in the finals like this, Crazy Canuck, who is now on the inside, has a nice little present. Off they go, and once again, a good start as Crazy Canuck is in the lead. Now Numskull is up there, and look at Swervin' Herb. Challenge for the first place. I think he pulled ahead in the joker lane. Oh no, and Vapor Racing gets tipped over, and Numskull is trapped. Meanwhile, Swervin' Herb, first through the Flinthead Tunnel, comes down runway three. He continues to extend that lead. We know he is fast, and look at him fly around the big U. Cleanly down the scrambler with a 24 and a half second run. Here comes Crazy Canuck in second place. That's a nice little addition to his score. Let's begin up here on Mesa Butte, and keep your eyes on the inside lane as Sneaky Bob takes a very aggressive line. Now he comes into the wall and hits the wall just hard enough, and Numskull doesn't have a clean drift either, otherwise he may have been able to plow ahead. Using that speed, Swervin' Herb is able to carry his way down, and this is one of his strong points. He took advantage, and with a first place finish, he has four, but the leader remains Crazy Canuck. With two races down, it's hard for me to believe that Numskull and Sneaky Bob have yet to score. I don't consider this to be sloppy driving, just very aggressive driving for sure. Okay, race three, and Sneaky Bob has the lead. He's on the outside lane. Swervin' Herb comes up to match him and pulls on to Mesa Butte first. Little overdrifting, Sneaky Bob challenging for the lead. But here we see the speed of Swervin' Herb as he pulls around. Here comes Numskull on the outside. Oh my goodness! And it was Vapor Racing, Sneaky Bob, that tried to cut him off but was unsuccessful. Now Swervin' Herb looking good down the scrambler. And here comes Numskull. Oh no! Numskull, Numskull is trapped! And look at that, the Canadian takes second. Oh! And Numskull take third, Sneaky Bob in fourth. You've been watching race three. And let's go back here to the instant replay. Now take a look at another very consistent drift, but watch Vapor Racing. That is a very direct line, an aggressive line to try to pull ahead. Everyone looks clean, but as we come down here, Sneaky Bob just gets spanked for trying to cut in on Numskull, and it is Vapor Racing 
Okay, there we see the pass by the Canadian. Vapor Racing is in last place, but after Numpskull gets stuck, Crazy Canuck comes in for second. The score shows Crazy Canuck in first with 10, and Swerve and Herb has eight. Swerve and Herb is now on the outside as we get ready for race number four. Crazy Canuck is next to him. Numpskull, and on the inside is Sneaky Bob. There's the green light. Oh, a nice start by Sneaky Bob. And the Canadian and, and Swerve and Herb are really going after, but Numbskull just shoots out in the lead. Swerve and Herb is first on to Mesa Butte. Here comes the Canadian, and Crazy Canuck pulls an aggressive move. He is first down, and now he's tipped over. He's sliding on his back. Okay, Numbskull has the lead. Ooh, careful Numbskull as he holds the lead. I think, oh! Okay, there's Vapor Racing in second place, and Swerve and Herb in third. Numbskull is battling it out. He's going to take first, and Vapor Racing will take second. Swerve and Herb will take third. Race fans, this is just a perfect example of the battle that you are seeing in the finals with four very competitive drivers. Sneaky Bob tried to pull the same move on Swerve and Herb as the Crazy Canuck did, but this time, although Crazy Canuck succeeded, he found himself turtling over with just too much speed, in my opinion. Now take a look at what happens here as Sneaky Bob comes down. He uses that speed launching down the runway and looks good, but right at the entrance to the Big U, he finds himself sliding out, and so does Numbskull. That bunches all three cars up. Now Numbskull is fighting off Sneaky Bob, and Sneaky Bob is fighting off Swerve and Herb. As we approach the halftime, it's good to see Numbskull and Vapor Racing pulling up there, and there is a tie for the lead at 10. RV oh. Billy. Hold my beer, guys! Last night, we were all treated to a wonderful party by Dre the Beer Man as the category winners were introduced. And I'll tell you what, the trophies from StarCore Industries made the night just shine and bright up. It looked like a Christmas lighting ceremony. It certainly did. Aaron, tell us more about the individual winners. You bet. The first category was the best in show, and there were many judges, and the final four came down to the winner, which from Texas is Polo Racing. The next category was the fastest lap time. Boy, nobody could beat Flip, and he set a new track record. Congratulations. Then came the best drift, and it was Lucas with EP Videos that had the best drift, according to the judges. Please give Polo Racing, Flips Racing, and EP Videos a huge round of applause. They have put tons of time, energy, and talent into those beautiful Rallycross cars. And a special thanks to Joseph and StarCore Industries in California. Well, race fans, we're back to racing with four, four rounds of racing remaining. Now the two outside cars, that would be Numbskull and Crazy Canuck have a chance for extra points over the train. Look at the great start by the Canuck, and now it's uh, Sneaky Bob pulling out, and first down, we have lost Swerve and Herb. I think he crashed around over the jump, and now three points to Numbskull. I saw a little trouble back there with Crazy Canuck. Hopefully, yeah, he's still there. Numbskull continues to lead, and here comes Vapor Racing. Sneaky Bob in second place. Numbskull spinning around, and oh no! Sneaky Bob has crashed. Crazy Canuck takes second. Well, before the halftime break, Swerve and Herb was tied for the lead. Watch as he comes over just enough cockeyed that he falls to his side. We don't see that happen very often, and especially amongst these finalists. Meanwhile, Numbskull is first onto Mesa Butte, and he spins around, collects himself, but it's Crazy Canuck that has trouble. Three points for Numbskull and two points for Crazy Canuck, as they both continue down. Numbskull is taking the lead, and here comes Sneaky Bob. You are tracking the instant replay review from the train camera, which is one of the special features of Gravity Throttle Racing. Numbskull began in the catbird seat, and took full advantage getting a first place finish, plus three extra points over the train but it is Crazy Canuck that leads with 15. All the drivers will get two tries over the train jump for extra credit points. That makes it very critical. Numbskull is on the outside for his second attempt. Sneaky Bob is right inside of him and Sneaky Bob gets a great start. Here they go, with Sneaky Bob continuing to lead. We know he's fast through the snow. Oh, that's a very heavy ride into the wall, but it took advantage and now look at that. Four points over the train, he's well ahead of all the others. He may be employing a very aggressive driving technique just to make sure he get capitalized over the train. And the other drivers are behind, but they're catching up. He's sliding sideways. Here comes Numbskull and... Wow, that was close. We'll say third goes to Crazy Canuck and fourth will go to Swerve and Her. From the very get-go, Vapor Racing was leaving a vapor trail with the other drivers. Now, as he comes on to Mesa Butte, Take a look at what Sneaky Bob does. He runs that same hard line, but this time he doesn't tip over. Meanwhile, on the Joker lanes, 
Crazy Canuck and Swervin' Herb really get into it coming around. Numbskull gets two extra points and Crazy Canuck takes the lead. Now following them, Crazy Canuck is pushing for second place and check out how Swervin' Herb comes in to try to capture it away from uh, Crazy Canuck. As they come to the finish line, Sneaky Bob sneaks his way into first. Second place will go to Numbskull. Now Numbskull gets three points and two more points for the train bonus. And that puts him in the lead after six rounds of racing. Well, and for Vapor Racing, Sneaky Bob did his job. He's got one more try to go over the train jump. Now remember, Numbskull will not have any more tries, but this is Swervin' Herb's first attempt. There's a good start, and Sneaky Bob has the lead again. Here comes Swervin' Herb. Boy, it's a three-car dead even heat coming around. Nice drifting, and look at that pass. The pass by Bob. He wasn't sneaky about that at all, and he's got the lead. Around. Oh, he spins out and it's Swervin' Herb with the lead and he's being challenged by Crazy Canuck. Here he comes down on the scrambler. He's been very consistent and will come through in first. A beautiful time. Crazy Canuck in second once again and oh no, Numbskull and Sneaky Bob have crashed. Oh, that could spell doom for them. Let's go back, ladies and gentlemen, to the instant replay. Let's watch Swervin' Herb come in with a patented drift, but it is Sneaky Bob with a hard line and he almost gets four extra points. He comes around, taking the lead, and here comes the Canadian, but Sneaky Bob spins out. He took the swerve, and Swerve and Herb was straight as can be. Now, Numbskull and Sneaky Bob are fighting it out. Let's watch them come down, and we'll see what happens here as they both get onto the scrambler backwards. Both are trying to pivot around, and that's all it took. After seven rounds of racing, Swerve and Herb adds a first place finish and three points. Look at him up there. And Numbskull is still with 18. Well, and I'm sorry, Aaron, to interrupt you here, but I want to tell the fans, Numbskull is now in lane two. He does have a chance if he takes first place. He might win this whole thing. Swervin' Herb is on the outside. He's going to have to get ahead of Crazy Canuck. He's two points behind him. And Sneaky Bob, unfortunately, has no chance to win, but he is racing, and here we go. Everybody's looking tight. Got to keep up with Crazy Canuck, and he's coming in with the lead. Here comes Swervin' Herb. Oh, he just got hit in the face by Crazy Canuck, who is now blasting around the S-turns. He is in the lead. He's ahead of Numbskull. He is ahead of all the other drivers. If the Crazy Canuck can make it down the scrambler, he will win. He's spinning around, and he's going to come through for the win. Numbskull in second. Vapor Racing Sneaky Bob in third. And Swervin' Herb takes fourth. Congratulations to Crazy Canuck. Now watch here. Oh, wow. That is a slap across the front grill. Watch this again as Swervin' Herb looks to pin him to the wall. Aaron, did you add that punching sound effect? Uh, what effect? That one. Uh, yeah. This isn't boxing. <laughs> Take that, you filthy American. Aaron! Oh, uh, come on, Richard, it's funny. You've completely lost your focus. Look, Swerve and Herb just got an extra point over the train. Well, if you would just loosen up a little bit, maybe you could laugh and we could have fun and finish this race in style. I am not being tight. Well, your bow tie tells a different story. And race fans, with the last race, a first place finish and three extra points, the Bragan Wagon Champion is Crazy Canuck. Contrary to what Aaron says, I do have a lot of enthusiasm. I am not tight, and the bronze winner from North Carolina is Swervin' Her. Congratulations. Our silver medalist from Michigan is Nubskull. And the Grand Bragan Wagon Champion is the Crazy Canuck from Ontario, Canada. It all began in December, race fans, with seven time trials. Then we had 16 group races. You had to endure those ridiculous Hold My Beer dancers. Four semifinals and now, the final race and we're going to inter- uh, Hey cameraman, down here. We were going to interview Crazy Canuck, but now he is hungry enough, he is going to get a moose burger with his team. And for all you Canuck fans, we want to end with something very special. Fans, new track and 